we have you, Messiah, and we have you, Jesus. So we call you, Jesus, Jesus. So and Raphael, Raphael, and Jesus, I think it's the best of you. God is the good God. Greetings in the precious name of Jesus. We welcome you to Choices. Trust God all is well with you and your family. You know, today we stand with you in your difficult times. Whether it's the passing of a loved one, sickness, accident, or some disaster that may befall you, we encourage you at this time to be strong. Take courage, knowing that Jesus Christ is the answer to all your problems. He was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And because of his love for us, he is saying to us at this time, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Please, accept this invitation and find rest for your soul. We continue where we left off last week, where our brethren who visited the Holy Land of Israel will be sharing their experiences, experiences with you. And so we encourage you to stay with us. This is Choices, your favorite program. God bless you, and God continue to bless beautiful Guyana. Thank you, and welcome again. Amen, Reverend Singh. You know, as Reverend Singh cited last week, we looked at our experiences in Israel on the Bible Life Tour, and we started to share um, some of our um, interesting experiences. And uh, so this week, we want to continue. And like I said last week, for me, the issue of the, the, the visual and the being in the land of itself. Um, that, that was tremendous for me to actually not only read the word of God and hear the word of God, but to stand in some of the places where our Lord and Savior walked. And I cited last week the whole issue of the, the Via Dolorosa. Um, to know that here is a man who has all power, a man who is um, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, made himself lowly for us and walked that road, you know, um, being spat upon, being made a mockery of. And uh, I think we saw 14, we understand that there were 14 stations on that road. And at each station, significant events took place. I remember one of the stations talked about where he fell and uh, Simon of Cyrene had to help him fetch the cross. Then there's another station where 
um, the women were weeping and Thorne said, weep for yourselves because I'm on a mission um, heading to Golgotha. And so that for me is, is very impacting to, to, to lose everything temporarily um, for a greater name that was to come. As we see, he speaks Philippians, God give him a name that is greater than any other name. For me, the other big thing was was the issue of the room of, of the Syrian general, um, um, Naaman, where we had the experience of visiting the Jordan, the lower part of the Jordan, which is um, dirty. Uh, and, and that was made mention also in the scripture. And uh, Naaman was asked to go there and, and dip several times, seven times, before he would receive his cleansing from leprosy. Leprosy, and of course, Naaman was concerned about going in a dirty river to cleanse something that is dirty. So he turned to the slave girl, his, his um, aid, and he said, "Look, there are there are there are better rivers in 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 Syria. He talked with Abner and Papa. He said these are beautiful rivers. Why not go there?" And the girl said, "You know, if you were told to do something great, you would have gone, and so do it." And so Naaman responded. And the scripture is very clear that when he came up, his skin was like a child's skin, brand new, changed. And so I walked with a bottle, and I still to this day in my refrigerator, I have a sample of the of, of the water in that bottle. And the sediments go to the bottom, so every now and again I shake it and the dirt comes up. <laughs> and it's the dirt in the bottle. So I, I was telling my son, I said, we have to put a label a label on this um, bottle so that he wouldn't drink this water. And then he turned to his mother and said, um, yeah, we have to do that because if you drink this water, as it did, it might reverse your healing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he was joking um, around, but I have the water. And so it's it's not just the, you know, the speaking and, and so on, but to, to be there and to have that first hand experience and to learn. And I think the tour was so tremendous also in terms of the knowledge in terms of in terms of the learning, in terms of the history, you know, the names like the Kenora, the Galilee and Tiberius, the Sia three names, and um the, the learning was, was tremendous. My observation is that where Jesus was born in, in, in Nazareth, it, it had the population there was very small, and today um 180,000 people occupy Nazareth. I don't know if I had not gone there, if I would have been so inclined to do all that kind of research and, and gather that data. So the tour, the, you know, the tour was tremendous in terms of the outcomes, and it is something that all of us should seek to, to, to do at some point in time in our life. Gentlemen. Bishop, I want to say thanks to you because every person on this platform today have had the privilege of going to Israel. And uh, it is out of your leadership that we've been able to accomplish that. Like Dr. Hudson said, going to Israel is a life-changing experience. You have to be there. The Bible just comes alive. The, you've read what you were taught to actually experience, actually go through. Changes your entire mindset. Even changes the way you preach as a preacher. Uh, because you see things differently. In many times you apply your own culture to, to the scripture. But when you get there and you get a chance to go through and see that, it changes you. So I, I am fascinated over, for example, Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. And um, to see where it is, you have an understanding of why the, you had the storm. You understand why you have the fish um, that comes from the Sea of Galilee. There's a famous fish. Uh, looks like our tilapia. Um, you have an, a, a better understanding of Megiddo. You you have an understanding of the issue of warfare, the Mount of Transfiguration. You have an, um, an appreciation for the architecture, especially the Roman architecture. I am still fascinated. I still have a photograph that I, I keep. And the last time I was there was when the 20, it was 2019 that I've kept taking, taking photographs in the Coliseum. Um, it is an amazing place. And to to find this stadium that is created with uh, with its own song effect, it is it, it, it is just it just blows your mind, and I want to say thanks for that experience. So I can appreciate 
what my brothers are talking about. Really, really you know, appreciate it. We, we were unable to visit Caesarea. But right there in Caesarea, there was, you know, the movie, the motion picture, Ben-Hur. It is believed that the scene of the, um, the, the, the chariot race um, with Charlton Heston and the other chariots, it was filmed right there in that area. I, I stood for as long as I possibly could, trying to recreate, trying to imagine as the horse, you know, I grew up opposite uh, a horse racing Durham Park. And so I, since a young man, love <clears throat> the might and the power of these thoroughbreds. And um, thinking very many times about this scene, but we were unable for one reason or the other to visit today. The Via Dolorosa is an unbelievable um, site. The 14, the 14 stations of the cross is celebrated by, um, by the Catholics. And as the, 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 those pilgrims traverse the original cobblestones of the days of Jesus, of course, the same marketing is available. Um, people have their businesses and their stands and they show across. It's always a place of bustle, hustle and bustle, sometimes more than others. And um, you could find, and, and they have eating houses. But what is amazing is that these 14 stations are clearly identified in Roman numerals on a building, the side of a building. It is well known. The tour guides would take you and perform. People reflect on something that happened in the life of Jesus at that point. And while you are doing that, people are hawking, selling. Um, it could be a truck is about to pass. Now, this is, you have to imagine how they coexist. Um, you have a, a narrow passageway and one of their trucks would come through and people just press into the side into the buildings and allow those vehicles to pass. What must it have been like as Jesus was um, about his business? The, the Jews and, the, and the, the Romans, they were taking him through. That scene is so, so still full of life full of verb, and uh, you're able to see the New Testament descriptions of what happened along that route. And um, it is amazing that this is not just, this is not just a picture painted by some writer. The reality of being on the ground, getting the feeling, getting the smell, getting the taste perhaps, and of course, watching scripture come to life. Unbelievable. You, you just have to be there to see it and to experience it. Indeed, Bishop Messiah. You know, I was privileged to visit Israel with an amazing team led by you in 2019. And one of the things that impacted me was the abiding presence and power of God at so many of the sites we visited. To walk where Jesus walked hundreds of years after and experience his power and his presence in such a, a real way was truly amazing, was truly impactful. I mean, when we visited the church on the Mount of Transfiguration, it's as if there was an, an spontaneous outburst of worship. I'm sure you can recall that for those of us who were there as people just worship God because you sense and felt the presence and power of God. I mean, visiting where um, 
visiting the the garden too. I I mean I hardly slept that night before. Mm-hmm. Just reflecting on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the finished work on Calvary. And then to go into that tomb and experience that it's empty. The word of God brought new life, new experiences to you. And I just recalled Jesus's conversation with Martha in John 11, when he said to her, she was trying to grapple with the whole notion of what he was saying to her. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though you are dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Then he asks a very important question. Do you believe this? Man with a resounding yes, I believe. And so your life is never the same. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, visiting so many sites, so many sites, it's, it's truly the, the wailing wall. You're just the abiding presence of God, the power of God. You experience transformation. You experience healing. And so these are real life examples of what happens to, to you when you visit the Holy Land. And I am so privileged, you know, visiting the upper room again, an outburst of praise and worship. Forgive me for just, uh, you know, referring to these outbursts because this is this is where my heart is. And uh, I, I just love to worship the Lord. I believe one time Bishop was looking for me. I was on the floor, just laid out there before God, just experiencing the power and the presence of God. So I'm grateful for the opportunity. The young members of the Palestinian police, they, uh, some of us had gone into the church of the nativity. Another, another fantastic building, housing a complex surrounding it, the nativity. And, um, Brother Fung was sitting with me outside and the two, two, Arabs went up to him. They were members of the police. And they they were struck by his physique. And they were um they were touching his his arms, his muscles, and um Fong did not um waste any time in displaying his his, his physical his physique to them. I mean he was just there in his jersey and pumping his arms and so on. And some of these guys were fascinated, but, and they kept asking, where are you from? Where are you from? Uh, Guyana, he said over and over again. I was amazed that um, they were communicating with each other. And uh, as they took care of the security, as they asked different ones coming into that area. So it's, 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 Another powerful thing is not just the theological meaning, but the people, the people from around the world. You know, it's amazing to see in 2023, people from the from around the world are still pouring into that land to reflect on what where we lived, the culture of the time, um, where he did some of the most significant things. Um, We went up to that same mountain of transfiguration. The scripture is clear in the book of Luke that Jesus took three of his disciples up there. They had no motorized transportation. I'm struck by the fact that they obviously walked. And you remember seeing the elevation, right? So he had to be a very fit man, is my conclusion. And he walked, and there those men recorded some of the most powerful images in scripture. Yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing to be able to sit there 
And you know, you don't have to answer your phone, you don't have to run to the supermarket, you're there and you're fully absorbed with the meaning and the text of what you're reading. And as, 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 as Dr. Paul just said, we also get a taste of the presence. Yeah. Each one of us could talk more and more about indeed, it. Indeed, indeed, Bishop. Um, seeing the Bible come to life um, was phenomenal. And one of the things that I'm reminded of is that Israel is primarily desert, but you would never you would never believe you're standing or touring a desert area because the, of the bloom, the development, the hand of God uh, being manifested as being able to cause the desert to bloom. I remember, you know, Reverend Hudson spoke about bring back water and stuff like that in the bottle. I remember when we were at the, the Dead Sea, which is... Uh, one of the lowest places on the earth. Um, lots of persons use the mud from the Dead Sea uh, yeah. for therapeutic purposes, uh, facial cleanses, and, and, and you know, you have a mud bath. I remember the Reverend Asana spoke about the, the, the fish. I think, we, I think they call it the St. Peter fish and the tilapia. Man, it was, quite, it was quite the experience. One of the, of course, the... Um, you know, being able to be baptized in the in the River Jordan twice, both in 2018 and 2019, as the Lord will have it. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous experiences. And really, as a young person that was able to see Israel, well, I want to encourage, especially young people, all people, but especially young people, make the sacrifice. Go by faith. The first time Excellent. I went to Israel, it was by faith. Um, I want to thank Bishop for his prayerful and tangible support in making that trip happen. But go by faith. Just have the desire and God will make a way and you put your, put your faith into action and God will be well pleased. The second time was by what? You said the first time by faith. The second time. <laughs> I was thinking about it, but I, by faith again. Yeah, it, it's, just the, it's not just a spiritual experience, but also the... Uh -huh. It, it would clear I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It right. is something different, Bishop. I've gone to other places, but it is something different. You know, um, when Bishop, you mentioned the 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 amount of people, the pilgrimage and all of that. You know, I I you know it the scripture talks about um peoples of all nations. And so in Israel there, I don't think um perhaps there's any other place where you'll be able to see. Um, people of all ethnicity, um, not only assemble or gather there, but I was impressed by um, the warmth. And I reflected if perhaps I was in some other places, some other place rather, if the, the warmth that was extended to us, if it might have been, um, but that the Holy Land brought out, I think, the best inside of the vilest of us. You know, we, we chatted, we spoke, we laughed. And because we were in the Holy Land and with one blood, God has made all of us. And so they, they, yeah. that really stood out to me, how we were able to interact with people from all parts of the world that we met there. Yeah. When I read the, the, the issue of Cana, the Jesus um, pouring water into wine, and when I read in the scripture about the jars, I could tell you that I, 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 I thought, I thought that these jars, you know, it's like some clay jar or something like that, that could be thrown down and broken and so on. That was my, honestly my perception of somebody, you know, some potter put jars together. But when I saw the size of those jars and the structure, um, you know, and, and the composition, th those jars were heavy. I think they have a big one in a case that is sealed, um, so you can't really touch it like that. But the size of, of those jars, uh, and to see those jars that, that Jesus actually turned the water into wine at that wedding, you know, and um, it just speaks to the whole fact that Jesus was a, com was a community man, because, it, I mean, he took time to actually attend the wedding and to fix an issue that existed at the wedding because 
Um, I understand in those days, um, if you ran out of wine, it would have been a major embarrassment um, on the family that you ran out of wine. And then, and, and then the, the wine that, that he made in terms of that miracle, when the gentleman said, you see, most people, you know, when you're already, when, when you've consumed a lot and so your taste seems to, to dissipate, uh, that's when you bring out wine that, you know, that doesn't make much, um, doesn't have this good taste. But he said, you brought out the, you saved the best for last. But, but the jars, you know, the size of those jars and the fact that as a community man, he took time, you know, to, to go to a wedding and address an issue that could have turned out to be embarrassing. I think that that, that was, that was tremendous for me. And another aspect that really stood out to me and it continues to stand out to me is how they embrace um, their young people, their children, their families. There is a clear um, indication that it's important for them to make that connection and to build that bridge when it comes to generational, transferring generational knowledge, transferring the culture and everything to the children. Because at many of these sites, you'd see the local people right there, not only uh, working by themselves, but working with their children or bringing their children along, and not only to their business, their places of business, but also to even um, their places of worship. You saw sons with fathers, literally sons, not one alone, you know, they, they move in big groups, you know. <laughs> um, it was multi-generational because there's something special about the way that they perceive life, how, how they live life. And I think that in Guyana, once that would be an interesting aspect for us to adopt where, when it comes to investing in families in that way, where we look at it as not just, you know, when you come home from work, then that might be the opportunity that you have to spend with your family. But bringing in your children into your worship, into your, your craft, into everything that you're doing, I think that's going to help to transform our culture here in Guyana. And I think that's one of the critical things that stood out in Israel. Martin, uh, you can mark in. I don't want us to run over that point. It's a significant point. When you raised it, I remember it took me right back to my last experience. And uh, indeed, they think of life generational. Um, the old structure is generational. And uh, they build on that generational concept. And they see from father to son to grandson to great-grandson. And each generation, there is a deliberate attempt to bring along that generation for others to build upon. It is an amazing piece of culture that I want to echo what you said, that if we apply it to our culture, it's going to really take us a very far way. Thank you for raising that. Without any announcement, it seems as though the Jewish people the Arabs, the Palestinians, or whoever, whatever, whatever is their ethnicity, living within that geographical sphere, the philosophy is the current generation is running a relay. You don't see them passing a stick along, but intentionally, what we saw every on the Sabbath, fathers, grandfathers, and as was just observed, they don't have one son like me. They have sons and daughters, and they are all going to the source of instruction and information, the synagogue, the temple. You can be a part of our next visit. You could not just to go on a tour, but experience the transformation that is possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Choices. We look forward to seeing you the next time we are on. God bless you. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.